start by starting a new sketch and selecting our front plane. And then I want to grab my rectangle tool and off our origin, let's drag to the right and let's give it a width of three inches and hit the tab key on our keyboard and let's type in 0.25 for the height and hit enter. Then I'm going to grab my line tool and this is going to start looking a little weird because I'm going to skip some steps here, but it should be pretty obvious what I'm doing by the end. I want you to take your line tool and I want you to select the bottom right corner of this rectangle and drag it up and to the left through my shape up this direction here. And let's see here. I want to give this a length of 2.5 inches and I'm going to hit the tab key on my keyboard. You can see right now when I hit the tab key on my keyboard, it toggles between the length and the angle. I want to change the angle to be 135 degrees off the horizontal and then hit enter. Then I'm going to grab my line tool again and I'm going to click the end of the line that I just created and I'm going to drag it down and I want to make sure that I have that perpendicular that little 90 degree mark for myself. And I want to tell this to also be 0.25 long. And if I have that right angle and it says 0.25, I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And I'm going to grab my line tool one more time and select the end of that point and drag it down. And once again, I want to make sure I have this 90 degree mark up here when I select down at the bottom of the shape here. And so you can see I sort of created this new sort of slanted shape here. I'm going to go ahead and finish my sketch, hit my home view and hit extrude and I want to select this shape and this shape but I want to skip that little triangle right there and I want to extrude it 1.25 and hit enter then what I want to do is I want to add some fillets to the top of this so let's go find our fillet feature and off of these two edges this edge right here and let's go around to the other side this edge right here I'm going to tell it to fill it all the way in. And so what is that going to look like? Well, if the entire extrusion was 1.25, it should be exactly half of that. So I'm going to type in 1.25 divided by two and fusion will do that math for me and make it perfectly filleted in the middle and hit okay. Then I'm going to start a new sketch on this face. And I'm going to project this arc by hitting P on my keyboard and click on the arc and hit OK. Then I'm going to grab my circle tool and I'm going to draw a circle with a diameter of 0.5 and hit enter and finish my sketch and extrude that circle all the way through and hit OK. And that's actually all we need to show this example in the drawing sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And I'm going to type in auxiliary view example. And hit save. And now that I've got it saved in here, I'm going to go to design, drawing, from design. Make sure my personal drawing is selected and hit OK. And let's go ahead and put down this time our front base at a one-to-one -one scale towards the bottom left. And go ahead and leave hidden edges on and hit OK. Then we'll go up here to create and find projected view. Select our front face, drag up for our top view, drag to the right for our side view, and drag up to the top right for our isometric view. Right click and hit OK. And I'm going to edit my isometric view as usual to include shaded with no hidden edges and hit close. Now, why would we want to add an auxiliary view? Well, if you look at this circle here, we can't really see the circle. We can't even really give it our center mark. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and add a center line in between these two hidden lines here. Right click and hit OK. 
but we can't even add a center mark on these circles. And so for manufacturer, it might not actually be clear that these are circles. And I guess I could try dimensioning the circle and saying it has some diameter, but it looks like it's actually having a hard time selecting the circle at this angle. And maybe there's a way to do it, but there's an easier way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find in create my auxiliary view. And so you can either select here or go down into the menu, but you can see that's just this one up here. And it wants to know what edge I would like to create an auxiliary view for. And I would like it to be this slanted edge right here. So I'm going to select it and I'm going to drag it up to this general area and I'm going to click and hit OK. And you can see, well, this is my auxiliary view. I'm going to go ahead and edit this to remove hidden edges. So I'm going to deselect from parent and just select visible edges so I can only see that and hit close. So this is that flat view. And so if I were to go back to my example and start a sketch on this face, obviously it's slightly turned, rotated sideways this direction, but it is looking square at this face. And so why is that so important? Well, I can add my center mark to the circle here, and I could even dimension this circle and its diameter now pretty easily. Another example of why this is so important is if I wanted to find the distance between this circle and this edge over here, if I do it, you'll see that it gives me this 1.33, but that's actually not true. If I dimension it from here from my auxiliary view, you'll see that it's actually 1.88. I'm going to right click and hit OK. And you might be asking yourself, what are those two corners right there? And if that's not clear to you, let's take a look. You can see it's actually this face back here. You can see those two corners from this edge here. I'm going to go ahead and finish the sketch and I'm actually going to delete the sketch. I don't want it included in here. Let's hit save and then update it here. Although there's not much to update. Um, go ahead and click it again until it goes away. And actually let's go ahead and add the center line in between the center mark and this center line here. So let's go back to our center line and let's start with our center mark and go to this line, you can see it line up. So we know it lines up perfectly. Right click OK. But hopefully this not only helps you understand how to create an auxiliary view in Fusion 360, but also why an auxiliary view might be important in engineering.